until recently, it appeared economic competition had been driving the rise and fall of small and large companies across the U.S. Supposedly, PepsiCo is Coca-Cola's competitor, Apple and Android V for your loyalty, and drug companies battle for your healthcare dollars. However, all of that turns out to be an illusion. Since the mid-1970s, two corporations, Vanguard and BlackRock, have gobbled up most companies in the world, effectively destroying the competitive market on which America's strength has rested, leaving only false appearances behind. Indeed, the global economy may be the greatest illusionary trick ever pulled over the eyes of people around the world. A handful of mega corporations, private investment companies, dominate every aspect of our lives, everything we eat, drink, wear or use in one way or another. These investment firms are so enormous, they control the money flow worldwide. So, how does this scheme work? While there appear to be hundreds of competing brands on the market, like Russian nesting dolls, larger parent companies own multiple smaller brands. In reality, all packaged food brands, for example, are owned by a dozen or so larger parent companies. Pepsi Company owns a long list of food beverage and snack brands, as does Coca-Cola, Nestle, General Mills, Kellogg's, Unilever, Mars, Kraft Heinz, Mondelez, Dannon, and Associated British Foods. Together, these parent companies monopolize the packaged food industry, as virtually every food brand available belongs to one of them. These companies are publicly traded and are run by boards, where the largest shareholders have power over the decision-making. This is where it gets interesting, because when you look up who the largest shareholders are, you find yet another monopoly. All the topmost shareholders can change from time to time, based on shares bought and sold. Two companies are consistently listed among the top institutional holders of these parent companies, the Vanguard Group Incorporated and BlackRock Incorporated. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you'd learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. For example, while there are more than 3,000 shareholders in Pepsi Company, Vanguard and BlackRock's holdings account for nearly one-third of all shares. Of the top 10 shareholders in Pepsi Company, the top three, Vanguard, BlackRock, and State Street Corporation, own more shares than the remaining seven. Now, let's look at Coca-Cola Company, Pepsi's top competitor. Who owns Coke? As with Pepsi, the majority of the company shares are held by institutional investors, which number 3,155, as of the making of this video. Three of the top four institutional shareholders of Coca-Cola are identical with that of Pepsi, Vanguard, BlackRock, and State Street Corporation. The number one shareholder of Coca-Cola is Berkshire Hathaway Incorporated. These four, Vanguard, BlackRock, State Street, and Berkshire Hathaway, are the four largest investment firms on the world. So, Pepsi and Coca-Cola are anything but competitors. And the same goes for the other packaged food companies. All are owned by the same small group of institutional shareholders. The monopoly of these investment firms isn't relegated to the packaged food industry. You find them dominating virtually all other industries as well. Take big tech, for example. Among the top 10 largest tech companies, we find Apple, Samsung, Alphabet, parent company of Google, Microsoft, UI, Dell, IBM and Sony. Here, we find the same Russian nesting doll setup. For example, Facebook owns WhatsApp and Instagram. Alphabet owns Google and all Google-related businesses, including YouTube and Gmail. It's also the biggest developer of Android, the main competitor to Apple. Microsoft owns Windows and Xbox. In all, four parent companies produce the software used by virtually all computers, tablets and smartphones in the world. Who, then, owns them? Here's a sampling. 
Facebook, more than 80% of Facebook shares are held by institutional investors, and the top institutional holders are the same as those found in the food industry. Vanguard and BlackRock being the top two, as of the end of March 2021. State Street Corporation is the fifth biggest shareholder. Apple, the top four institutional investors are Vanguard, BlackRock, Berkshire Hathaway, and State Street Corporation. Microsoft, the top three institutional shareholders are Vanguard, BlackRock, and State Street Corporation. You can continue going through the list of tech brands, companies that build computers, smartphones, electronics and household appliances, and you'll repeatedly find Vanguard, BlackRock, Berkshire Hathaway and State Street Corporation among the top shareholders. The same ownership trend exists in all other industries. Let's say we want to plan a vacation. On our computer or smartphone, we look for a cheap flight to the sun through websites like Skyscanner and Expedia, both of which are owned by the same group of institutional investors, Vanguard, BlackRock, and State Street Corporation. We fly with one of the many airlines, American Airlines, Air France, KLM, United Airlines, Delta, and Transavia, of which the majority of the shares are often owned by the same investors. The airline we fly on is in most cases a Boeing or an Airbus. Again, we see the same institutional shareholders. We look for a hotel or an apartment through bookings.com or airbnb.com. Once we arrive at our destination, we go out to dinner and we write a review on TripAdvisor. The same investors are at the basis of every aspect of our journey. And their power goes even much further, because even the kerosene that fuels the plane comes from one of their many oil companies and refineries. Just like the steel that the plane is made of comes from one of their many mining companies. This small club of investment companies, banks and mutual funds, are also the largest shareholders in the primary industries where our raw materials come from. The same goes for the agricultural industry that the global food industry depends on and any other major industry. These institutional investors own Bayer, the world's largest seed producer, they own the largest textile manufacturers and many of the largest clothing companies. They own the oil refineries, the largest solar panel producers and the automobile, aircraft and arms industries. They own all the major tobacco companies and all the major drug companies and scientific institutes too. They also own the big department stores and the online marketplaces like eBay, Amazon and AliExpress. They even own the payment methods we use, from credit card companies to digital payment platforms, as well as insurance companies, banks, construction companies, telephone companies, restaurant chains, personal care brands, and cosmetic brands. No matter what industry you look at, the top shareholders, and therefore decision makers, are the same, Vanguard, BlackRock, State Street and or Berkshire Hathaway. In virtually every major company, you find these names among the top 10 institutional investors. Diving deeper, we find that these major investment firms are in turn owned by their own set of shareholders. One of the most amazing things about this scheme is that the institutional investors, and there are many more than the primary four we've focused on here, also own each other. They're all shareholders in each other's companies. At the top of the pyramid, the largest Russian doll of all, we find Vanguard and BlackRock. Together, they form an immense network that we can compare to a pyramid. Smaller institutional investors, such as Citibank, ING, and T. Rowe Price, are owned by larger investment firms such as Northern Trust, Capital Group, 3G Capital and KKR. Those investors, in turn, are owned by even larger investment firms, like Goldman Sachs and Wellington Market, which are owned by larger firms yet, such as Berkshire Hathaway and State Street. At the top of the pyramid, the largest Russian doll of all, we find Vanguard and BlackRock. The power of these two companies is something we can barely imagine, not only are they the largest institutional investors of every major company on earth, they also own the other institutional investors of those companies, giving them a complete monopoly. 
the data from Bloomberg, showing that by 2028, Vanguard and BlackRock are expected to collectively manage $20 trillion worth of investments. In the process, they will own almost everything on Earth. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This everything inside me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.